Whether you're a Mac user or a Windows user or a Linux user, or if you use a Kindle e-reader or a Kobo e-reader, if you use a tablet like an iPad or an Android device or any of the phones that are out there, basically if you use anything with an operating system, then there's something that's been available to you for over 40 years across all of the operating systems, but people do not use it to its maximum potential. And that's what we're gonna talk about here in this video today. Hey everybody, my name is Frank and I have a master's degree in learning and technology. I teach at a post-secondary institution. I've been teaching for over 26 years. And here on this channel, we look at how we can use technology to learn and teach more effectively. Basically, we look at technology through an educational and a productivity standpoint. Now, what I'm talking about in this video is PDFs, Portable Document Format. Now you're familiar with PDFs if you've ever worked with any computer. Chances are if you downloaded an instructional manual or if you've worked in the academic world and you've downloaded a, a paper from a journal or if you have anything where somebody's wanted to distribute information to you and they want to make sure you can read it on whatever device you have and they want to make sure that it maintains its format no matter what device you're using it on, then chances are you've downloaded or you've opened a PDF on your computer. But there is so much more to PDFs than just being able to read stuff. We also have the whole other aspect of PDFs, which is the creation of PDFs, the management of PDFs, doing things like applying artificial intelligence to a PDF to extract information, using things like OCR in order to turn a PDF into a searchable document. I can scan something and then I can turn that into a PDF use OCR and then be able to search that information, uh, search for information in that PDF. What I need to do that though, is not just the reader software, I need software to manage PDFs. And that's where the sponsor of today's video comes in, UPDF. They have a solution that allows me to do a ton of things with PDFs. I'm going to show you just a few of the cool features that they have because PDFs have evolved massively in the past 40 years. We've gone from just a simple, this tool creates them and everybody can read them scenario to tools that allow us to do a lot more complex management, combination of PDFs. Well, you'll see, there's just a ton of things I can do with PDFs. And the good news is that UPDF has a solution that is about the quarter of the price of Adobe Acrobat in terms of creation and working with PDFs. So I'm gonna show you some of the features and then I'll put a link down below. You can even get a discount. So let's go take a look at UPDF and some of the amazing things that we can do when we think of PDFs, not just from a reading standpoint, but from a creation and management standpoint. Like most people, I'll work with PDFs from a reading standpoint. So I'll read a lot of journal articles, a lot of instruction manuals, PDFs that accompany different courses that I'm taking or teaching, a lot of different uses for reading. And I like to be able to read on my iPad, my Kindle, and my computer. So I wanna be able to read across multiple devices. But once we get an authoring tool or a, a tool that allows me to manage and work with PDFs a lot more deeply, like UPDF, there are so many more ways that I can work with PDFs to incorporate them into managing all of the information that I have to deal with. So I've installed UPDF here. You can just go to the website. I'll put a link down below and you can install it and start playing around with it yourself. But when you install it, you'll get this nice clean interface. You'll notice that your recent documents that you've been working with will show up here. You can manage those. Uh, you can star certain documents if you need to refer to them and you want them uh, sort of favorited. They even have a UPDF cloud. So I can load all of my documents into that UPDF cloud, which then allows me to access them from different devices. So a lot of my workflow, I will have documents that I want to annotate on my iPad and then I'll want to use them here on my computer. So this, this makes that possible. This is facilitates that. There's a ton of different tools, but let's just pop down to batching PDFs. One of the things that I often need to do is combine PDFs together, but there's other different types of batch processes that I can do here as well around creation and encrypting multiple documents, converting PDFs. 
The real thing here is we look at the tools. There are so many different things that we can do once we have view PDF that will allow me to really manage the, the documents that I need to manage. So you can, ima you can imagine how useful this is. I'm not going to go through all of them, but it boils down to categories. Like I can organize my PDFs. I can edit them, which is very useful. Editing PDFs is something that can be very challenging. If you don't have a tool like you PDF, I can create PDFs from Word documents or PowerPoints or Excel. That's a great way to share financial data through a PDF generated off of an Excel spreadsheet. I can export PDFs into multiple formats. I can optimize them. PDFs in the past used to be quite large, so we can compress them down here. OCR, I'll show you that in a moment. That's very useful. Um, I can protect them. I can do things like digital signatures. I can do things like redact a PDF so that certain information is not shared. Uh, it's really powerful. Plus, there's some web-based tool that I'll show you as well in terms of working with um, artificial intelligence to summarize PDFs as well as to create mind maps out of PDFs. So let me just show you a few of these things. There's so much here, but there's a few that are really cool that I want to share with you. One of the things I really like about UPDF because I can use it across multiple devices is that I can use my iPad to import a PDF then I can use annotation on that PDF, do all the markup using my iPad pen when I'm on the go, when I'm studying, and then I can bring it to my computer where I can do further work on it, creating a really nice workflow. Once I've done all those annotations on my iPad, I can just come into my computer here, go to my UPDF cloud, I can see the documents that I've annotated, and I can continue annotating, adding things like timestamps or all sorts of different things that I can use to annotate and make sure that I'm taking really good quality notes with this PDF. I like this feature a lot because sometimes I'm on my computer, a lot of times I'm on my iPad reading and annotating, and I have that seamless integration between the two devices because my UPDF allows me to have it on both devices, plus actually more. So it's a great feature that I really like. Another reason that I really like the UPDF software is it makes editing a PDF very easy. So I have a number of PDFs here. Sometimes I'll annotate them, which is adding information onto the PDF. But here I wanna actually go in and change the PDF itself. Now, it could be PDFs that I've created or maybe I'm using a PDF as part of a class that I'm teaching and I wanna add some additional uh, information into the PDF to let students know about a certain aspect. Maybe it relates to a certain program outcome and I wanna capture that. So let's say, for example, I have this plant science botany course Let's say I'm going to use this as part of a larger program. Let's say I have some slides here where I have some images. So I have an image, I have some text in here. By going into the edit function of uh, UPDF, I can get access into the text blocks here. So I could put something like my text in here. So I could add in here my text and you can make modifications in here. I'll just scroll up a little bit so I can change the size of the block here. So you can make some modifications in here. You can do all sorts of editing in here to make it exactly the way you'd like it. I can even get access to the images where I could replace this with one of my own images. So let's say I wanted to modify this PDF, but I wanted to include some, some local images or images that I took while I was studying this material. Again, this is for my own use here. I obviously wouldn't distribute this as a PDF because it belongs to someone else, but for my own use, or if I did own this PDF, I would be able to make modifications and I could edit it. And it's a very easy thing to do with UPDF. A lot of times we'll be working from scans that we take from books or material that we're working with, or maybe we've taken a picture of something. So I could take an image and I could go in and choose to scan from a book. You'll see here that the book is two pages. My picture or my image is two pages from the book. And what I can do is just go into here and split it. So I'll actually split a vertical line right down the middle. I can adjust where that vertical line falls. And then when I split it, I'll get a PDF of two separate pages. I can go in and I can save that. So I'll go ahead and save that PDF. I can save it to wherever I'd like to save it. So I'll save it into my downloads now. So we'll go ahead and replace the file that was in there. And then I could go to UDF Cloud, which I'll often do, and I'll upload a file. So I'll actually go to my downloads here. So I'll grab my downloads and we'll grab the scan from, 
wherever it's hiding in here, there's a scan from the book. And now I've got this PDF here, this scan from the book that I created, and I can read this as a PDF. And I can read it on my iPad, I can read it on any of my devices. But I could take this one step further. I can take this scan from cloud and I can actually go in, we'll go into, we'll close this down, and I'll go into my tools here, and I can actually use OCR on this particular PDF. So I'm going to go into my scan from book PDF, and you can see I can turn this into a searchable PDF. Really useful if I have a lot of, um, if I have a lot of different documents, I'll, again, I'll just use my download folder for now. What you normally would like to do is have, you know, dedicated folders for the different research that you're doing. But now I've done an OCR on here, and this has become a searchable PDF. So let's say I want to look for the word process because I saw that in there. So if I go into process, you can see on these two pages, the word process is mentioned an awful lot actually. And I can find that within my, uh, within my PDF because I've performed OCR on here. Imagine if this was of course a longer chapter of a book that I wanted to have with me wherever I went. I take some pictures of it, can process it pardon the pun, I can process it and make sure that I have that in a PDF format that I can search. You're probably starting to get pretty amazed with all the different things we can do with PDFs and I'm just really scratching the surface. Instead of using the tools menu, we can actually do a lot of things right off the PDF as well. So if you scroll down here, the editing I've shown you already and we can prepare forms, we can redact PDFs, we can go and organize our pages, we can crop, I showed you how to split the PDF we have different page tools on this side here I showed you already how to do the OCR we can do things like export the PDF with all these different formats that we can use for example let's say I had a PDF of different images and I wanted to create a PowerPoint deck out of that easily done but you can also export it out as an image or even some data formats like XML and such I can go in and I can do all sorts of things around uh, protecting the PDF with passwords so I have different types of passwords this is actually something that's interesting if you're a sysadmin because you can you can um, put this as part of your authentication system that you have as part of your domain for example but I won't go into every 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 aspect here we can send it by email we can share it with other people but there's one feature I want to show just before I sort of end this video and that's down here at the bottom and that is the UPDF um, AI so I can go in and I can go in and start using the UPDF AI and you can see that I now have all sorts of interesting tools that I can use to generate things like a summary of this PDF as well as a mind map. I want to show you both of these. I can also do questions against the PDF. I can translate it into other languages and I can have a chat with uh, the AI about the PDF. This is a really interesting feature that I'm very excited to explore even more. So if I go in and I do something like, I'll just say get started here, and I'm going to go in, I'm going to work with this PDF, it's just processing it right now, so it's going to grab this. You can also do this online, but you can see here, it's generating a summary of the PDF. I can do things like what are the main educational methods that were used. This is a fairly complex PDF, so I'm getting quite a detailed summary here. So you can see I've got all this information about the PDF, which I can continue to explore. One of the things that's really interesting that I like quite a lot about the, the, uh, the AI here as well. So we'll just go out here and we'll create a mind map. So this will actually go through this PDF and it will actually generate a mind map of the PDF. This is something that I think is pretty phenomenal because I'm a big fan of mind mapping and being able to go through and see the different connections and break things down into stems. This is a fairly complex PDF. So you can see as I get into some of the more detailed um, items in here, if I zoom in, right, you can see that I'm going to get um, a little bit of, of detail in here that might be a little bit extensive for me, but you can see here, on the main branches that's going to help me really start breaking down the introduction methodology results and certainly the first couple of layers here of this mind map will be very useful for me it's going to depend entirely on the pdf itself 
but I can always regenerate this mind map and I can also modify it based upon the PDF that I have. But that's a very interesting feature there as well. You can of course go in and you can um, copy this out. You can put it into your browser and you can download it as an image. You can even download it as markdown text this is very, very interesting because this means that I'll be able to import it into tools that use Markdown language. Things like Notion or Scrivenger or some other tools that are out there. So very interesting to have this uh, feature and something that is unique to you, the uh, PDF that I'm planning on playing around with a lot more. PDFs have been around forever, over 40 years, but I think a lot of times people just don't realize how powerful they are in terms of being able to work with them, edit them, use them with OCR, being able to now use artificial intelligence with UPDF to actually summarize them, extract information from them, and put them into new formats like mind maps. It's a really powerful tool, the PDF, because of its portability, but it's also made more powerful when you have something like UPDF to unleash that, that power of the information contained within them. So I'll put a link down below, of course, where you can go and check it out for yourself. And thank you very much for watching the video. We'll see you in the next one.